what is going on guys it's been a minute since I've been at my local honey hole Goodwill but I'm gonna go in here show you how I thrift to make some profit for resale and give you all some tips and tricks Wow, they've changed it all up. First thing I do is I go to the new bins, the new carts that they just come out. Because you're getting first crack at them versus everybody else that has already came before you. And there are pickers, wow. They're changing this place up. <laughs> Slim pickings, tell you that. <sighs> Typical guy looking for golf clubs. Uh, set of pings, set of tailor mades, Callaways. Uh, too bad that wasn't a Banksy. Wow, that's a great, for selling sunglasses, look at this thing. They want $25 though, uh, for sunglasses. Yeah, it's kind of wobbly. Oh, Mid-century modern, oh, it's got watermarks on it. Don't ignore mid-century modern, guys. MCM is the keyword that people put in eBay listings. Man, this whole place is in shambles. Uh, tools. Blood pressure. Welch. Hmm. I mean, it's used. Welch Allen. I might have to just do a comp search on this for the price at $12.99. That's another tip or trick that I'm gonna have to tell you. Make sure that when you approach your Goodwill or whatever thrift store you're going to, you're gonna need battery on your cell phone because you're gonna do comp searches on eBay or wherever. Uh, worth point sometimes I'll use, but if you don't have enough battery, you're gonna run out and then you're gonna have to guess and you don't wanna to have to be guessing when you're spending your money, especially for high dollar items. I always take a quick peek at the hats, especially if you see any vintage, like trucker style mesh hats. A lot of people collect those. And then I'll look at these t-shirts when I'm here. See if I can find any old single stitch rock. You know what I'm talking about, guys. Don't ignore old skateboards. There's some vintage old school skateboards. You can find them sometimes cheap at estate sales and garage sales also, because parents or grandparents parents, whatever. I uh, don't know that they're worth any money. These look more modern, but there's some older school ones that even if you part them out, because the truss and the wheels are even collectible. Keep that in mind.
any sealed VHS. You'll probably knew that already. Sealed is key. There's some good value. People want brand new, it's easy listing too, and the comp searches are easy because usually they'll have a barcode on the back of this. I know DVDs are a dime a dozen, but there are a few that um, people don't know that are worth a lot of money. I'll do some comp searches and throw them down. I know one of them is like Sonic the Hedgehog. Something to do with like royalties or something where they never put it and made um, it available. So that and then like there's some wrestling ones I think. And then um, what else? The 101 Dalmatians with Helen Close or I forget her name. But don't ignore DVDs if you have the time to look through them. But there are some that are worth some money. Check out the counter real quick, see if there's anything. Oh, that's an old school. No, it's modern though. If that was an old school Pokemon, that'd be worth something. Man, they got some serious prices. They check it for 925, that's for sure, because they have it marked on their price tag. They used to not be so adamant about checking things. Things are changing, y'all. A lot of people overlook the old school binders, but it's worth a quick glance to find the ones that maybe have the art on them. Like, almost like, not tie-dye, but just kind of like old school, really colorful. And the artist is called Lisa Frank. Off there's some comps on here. But if you see anything with Lisa Frank on it, kind of like this, but not, just real colorful old school binders, that is an easy flip for some good money. Now there are people that make a living by coming to thrift stores and going through all the t-shirts, guys. That can take a long ass time. So quick crash course is even though you might see something that looks vintage looking kind of like see how it's faded but if it has a silk screened like price tag or not price tag but just like branded on there like bob marley i'm a fan of bob marley like that's a cool shirt but it's not vintage just because they didn't have the capability of screen printing tags you're looking for actual tags like see see how there's tags you're looking for that with an old school. And a lot of times on the older t-shirts, they'll actually have a big year on the front. On the bottom, you'll see like a, a year of the printing. So that'll also help you out. I hate to say it, but I just don't spend too much time. I usually find my old school shirts at garage sales and estate sales, just because I know when I walk to the place, that um, you know, you get a feel for everything is kind of old at the house or estate, and therefore you already know that you know the T-shirts, etc., are also to that time frame. So uh, I'm not going to waste any more time. I just wanted to give you all a quick crash course. Um, you, not to say that you can't find them, but you're battling a lot of really good pickers here at Goodwills or wherever you might thrift. And if that's what they do, they're really quick and they know what to look for. So I'm gonna guess that this has already been picked. Through. Drop in real quick and tell y'all if you've learned anything or you like what you're seeing so far, drop a like, it really helps the channel. I'll always take a quick yander over in the art section, looking for older items that look original, not like 
printed in China or something stupid. Um, looking for ones that are signed or ones that have on the back, they'll usually have some paperwork called a C of A, Certificate of Authenticity. So if you see that, a lot of times it could be worth taking a look at. Just kinda saw this laying on the side here. American Tourister. I know that these vintage luggage pieces could be worth some money. Um, this one's kind of like a dark brown one though. The ones that are worth more money are the ones that have the colors, like the blues and the oranges and the reds. Um, like for this one, for example, they're asking 13 bucks. So somebody did a comp search on eBay back in the back. But the ones that are worth the money are the colors. I'm over here by where the sheet sets are. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for cartoon sheet sets. I know it sounds kind of funny, but even the used old school cartoons that people had as a kid. And I'm thinking, let's try to imagine like, I mean, if you could find the old Pokemons from the late 90s, if you can find Transformers, if you can find He-Man, find Smurf, you, you know, you get the idea. Old school, G.I. Joe, I can keep going on and on, but uh, I don't see any, but they'll stick out like a sore thumb. You wanna get the sheet sets, even if they're um, used, I mean, check to make sure there's not big holes or anything like that, but you can make some easy money on those too. little bag section over here. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a brand called Tumi. And I'm looking for any like, uh, what am I looking for? Anything that has NASA on it, because I'm in um, the Clear Lake NASA area. And right now there's a lot of people that collect NASA. So, or vintage oil and gas, that's new. But anything old in the oil and gas industry also. This looks like a strike out, but it's worth a shot. You never know, 30 seconds of looking could turn into a quick 100 bucks, guys. Look at this cool vintage lamp. And you can tell right away, because looking at the plug, it's just old amber glass has a couple scratches and then on top kind of want to look at what's called the pinnacle I learned that from the lamp lady on YouTube there's some decent lamps people spend money for unfortunately not this one y'all was making my rounds looking back to see if any new bins came out before I took off because I wasn't finding much but this is a good crash course for y'all on mid-century modern I was just about to give up on this thing because if you look underneath I'm looking for the screws to see if they are Phillips or flathead flathead is usually a good indicator that it is not, oh, you know, flathead is vintage, Phillips is not. But then you're looking for markings on the furniture. And I pulled out this drawer and boom, American of Martinsville. Okay, so that's a maker's mark, that's good news. So you get on your phone and you go ahead and do a comp search for that name brand on basically an end table. This is what it is. And let me show you what it came out with. All right, y'all, so I'm about to run out of battery, but in case y'all were wondering, yes, I did buy the mid-century modern end table. Uh, cost me about $26 all in, 
glad I bought it. I'll have to decide how I want to do this though. I don't know if I want to list it on eBay because shipping's going to be terrible or I'll just take it to the local auction house and have some resellers that know that type of furniture bid up on it and see how good it does. So y'all leave in the comments what y'all think I should do. Boom. Now not all pieces are collectible. Keep that in mind guys. And I know that it does have the little coffee stain, but somebody that knows how to restore furniture will not care about that. And I always look for a maker's mark either here or underneath. And like I said, pay attention to the screws. Usually the slotted or flat head screws are a good indicator for vintage. Don't forget, it helps out the channel if you hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to get more tips on how to find things that are worth money so you can make some side cash on your searches out there. Good luck. Take care, guys. It's been fun. Until next one, peace. So this is the